It started as another routine discovery, the kind astronomers have become familiar with in recent years. A small, dim object appeared on surveys taken on July 1st, moving against the background stars in a way that immediately caught attention. It wasn't following the orbital patterns of long-period comets or asteroids tied to our Sun. It was coming in from interstellar space, the same category as Oumuamua and Borisov. To most observers, it initially looked ordinary enough, brightening gradually, forming a faint coma, producing jets of carbon dioxide as sunlight warmed its surface. Nothing seemed alarming, nothing hinted at the debate that would follow. But with each passing week, the object began to behave in ways that didn't fit the familiar patterns. As it approached the sun, its mass loss climbed at a rate that surprised many astronomers. Jets erupted with unexpected force, and soon an enormous anti-tail stretched behind it, nearly three million kilometers long. For comparison, that distance is greater than the stretch between the Earth and the Moon. Chinese Tianwen-1 orbiter images confirmed the same thing enormous streams of material blasting outward. What puzzled scientists, however, was not just the size of the anti-tail, but what was missing. Despite these large-scale eruptions, the nucleus remained intact. No visible breaks, no fragments, nothing that matched the level of mass loss being calculated. Along with that, came small but noticeable changes in the object's color and velocity. The shift in reflectivity suggested something about the dust or the surface composition was changing, and the increase in speed could not be fully explained by gravity alone. The object was showing non-gravitational acceleration, something only a handful of comets exhibit, and almost never at this scale. By late October, researchers around the world were acknowledging quietly that the behavior was unusual, not impossible, but unusual enough to warrant close attention. This is when Avi Loeb stepped in, not with speculation, but with calculations. He gathered the data on the jets, the energy being released, the enormous size of the anti-tail, and the measured mass loss and then he compared it with something simple, the actual size of the nucleus measured by Hubble. That's when the numbers created a problem. To produce the jets observed, to sustain the mass loss rates being measured, the object would need a surface area roughly 16 times larger than what was visible. Its jets would require a nucleus about 23 kilometers across, but Hubble's images showed a body no larger than 5.6 kilometers. This wasn't a small difference. It was a mismatch so large that the natural explanation began to strain under the weight of the math. A comet can't release more energy than it receives from the sun. It can't lose more mass than the size of its surface allows. And most importantly, it can't endure violent outgassing without showing signs of breaking apart, unless something else explains the discrepancy. Loeb proposed the simplest model that the numbers allowed, fragmentation. The idea was that the object must have broken into at least 16 pieces, each contributing surface area to the total outgassing. That would solve the mass loss contradiction. It would explain the anti-tail, and it would match the energy budget. But the problem was plain. No observatory had seen those fragments. Not one. If the object had truly split that extensively, the debris should be obvious, bright, scattered, and easily visible as it reflects sunlight. That absence is what pushed Loeb to issue what he called a final warning. If the object appears as a cluster of fragments on December 19th, everything makes sense. 
the natural model survives. But if the object is still in one piece, if it shows no signs of breakup, then the jets cannot be explained by natural processes. They would be releasing too much energy for a single intact nucleus to support. In his usual steady tone, he laid out the conclusion many had avoided. If the nucleus is intact, then we are not looking at a normal comet. Not possibly or maybe. The physics simply doesn't permit it. That statement became the dividing line in the scientific community. Some researchers supported his reasoning. Others strongly pushed back, arguing that Loeb was over-interpreting limited data. But beneath all the debate, one truth remained clear. The object's behavior had moved beyond what standard comet models could comfortably explain. Everyone agreed on one thing. December 19th would be decisive. A natural comet should show clear fragmentation after such extreme outgassing. If it didn't, then a different explanation would be needed. As the date approached, people across the world, scientists and non-scientists alike, found themselves watching more closely than they expected. Not because they expected danger, but because the situation represented a rare moment. A moment where nature could surprise us, or challenge us, or force us to rethink assumptions that have held for decades. With every passing day, the object drew nearer, still intact, still active, still refusing to behave the way it should. And so, the world waited, not with fear, but with a quiet curiosity, the kind that comes before an answer you didn't realize you were waiting for. As the debate intensified, something unusual began happening in scientific circles. Normally, disagreements over comet models don't attract global attention. They are technical, quiet discussions in journals and conferences. But this time was different. The gap between the data and the expected behavior was so large that every expert had to take a position and the discussion quickly split into two clear camps. On one side were researchers who felt Loeb was overstating the inconsistencies. Scientists like Brian Cox and David Jewett argued that while the object was unusual, unusual doesn't automatically mean unnatural. Comets are diverse. Their surfaces can behave in ways that aren't always predictable, and our understanding of interstellar objects is still young. They encouraged patience and warned against jumping to extraordinary explanations when natural ones might simply be more complicated than expected. On the other side were those who agreed with Loeb's mathematical concerns. They pointed to the energy budget, the jet strength, the nucleus size, and the missing fragmentation as fundamental problems that models couldn't smooth over. They weren't claiming the object was artificial. They were simply acknowledging that the numbers left a gap that needed a clearer answer. And in science, when numbers refuse to align, it's usually a sign that something important is being missed. Loeb's credibility became a major focus of the discussion. Some critics dislike how open he is about unconventional possibilities, but others pointed out something often overlooked. He has been right before. In 2019, he predicted that an interstellar meteor had crashed into the Pacific Ocean. Years later, U.S. Department of Defense data confirmed it. Whether people agreed with him or not, he had a track record of seeing patterns early. And in this case, his argument wasn't based on speculation. It was based on thermodynamics and geometry. The object was releasing more energy than a single nucleus of its measured size could physically support. That wasn't opinion. That was arithmetic. The list of anomalies grew longer. 
The carbon dioxide jets were far stronger than expected. The object's color had shifted noticeably as it approached the sun. Its speed increased in ways that couldn't be fully explained by gravitational pull. And most importantly, there was no coma consistent with the amount of mass it was supposed to be losing. It was as if the object's behavior was happening behind a curtain. Energetic, dramatic, yet never leaving a clear signature of damage or decay. Ditch the core question remained simple. Would it break or not? If it fragmented into multiple pieces, then the natural explanation held. Those fragments would provide the extra surface area needed to power the jets. The energy gap would close. Everything could be folded back into the existing comet models, even if they needed some adjustments for interstellar chemistry. But if the object reappeared on December 19th, as one intact body, unbroken despite the extreme forces it endured, then the models would not just need adjusting, they would need rethinking, and that possibility quietly unsettled many scientists. Not because they expected anything dangerous, but because it hinted at the limits of our understanding. When a natural object behaves in ways that natural models can't explain, it means there's a missing piece. Maybe the nucleus contains unknown materials. Maybe its structure is denser than expected. Maybe interstellar comets form in environments wildly different from our own. All of those are possibilities. But the longer the object remained intact, the harder it became to avoid the larger question. What if this is not simply a comet behaving strangely, but a reminder that the universe has more variety and more complexity than we assume? On the eve of the object's re-emergence, the global scientific community settled into a reflective silence. Telescopes across the world, from Hubble and JWST, to small ground observatories operated by universities were prepared to capture every second of its return. Teams had models ready for both scenarios. If fragments appeared, the explanation would be swift. If a single intact nucleus emerged, the discussions would shift rapidly toward new physics or new formation theories. Loeb's final comment captured the tone perfectly. He didn't say the object was artificial. He didn't need to. He simply said this. If the object emerges whole, then nature is telling us something we haven't learned yet. And if it emerges fragmented, then it behaves exactly as a comet should, and the mystery ends there. That balance between possibility and caution is what kept people watching so intently. It wasn't fear or hype. It was the quiet awareness that these moments, when the universe refuses to behave as expected, are the moments that push science forward. No matter what the final answer is, something valuable will be learned. And so, as December 19th approached, the world waited again. Not for a threat, not for a warning, but for clarity. The kind of clarity that only arrives when observation replaces speculation and the cosmos reveals the truth in the simplest way possible, by showing us what it is, 